Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. Please subscribe and like to the channel and hit that notification bell to help me out with those YouTube algorithms. So today we're going to talk about Ubuntu NetPlan. In many of my previous presentations, we have configured networking for Docker and LexD using the built-in commands for those containers through the CLI. Prior to Ubuntu 16.04, the network configuration was changed by editing slash etsy slash network slash interfaces and then by running slash etsy slash init.d slash networking restart or by using the if up and if down commands. Although these commands still work, NetPlan is a utility for easily configuring networking on a Linux system. NetPlan works with both Network Manager and the system d network d renderers. So what does NetPlan do? Well, NetPlan allows configuration of the network by use of YAML files stored in the slash etsy slash NetPlan folder. Okay, a little bit of trivia. What does YAML stand for? Well, it stands for yet another markup language. And we're going to use Network Manager, which is a system service that easily manages Ethernet, Wi-Fi, mobile, broadband, and VLAN connections. Network D is normally used for servers, but I find that Network Manager to be more convenient, especially for interface with desktop controls, so it works for both desktops and servers. We will focus on how to configure NetPlan for bridged and Mac VLAN connections. So how does NetPlan work? We're, we're going to see how to configure a NetPlan YAML file. The NetPlan YAML file has as a minimum the following statements, and we're going to expand upon those greatly to change the network configuration of our server. So NetPlan Generate is invoked by NetPlan Apply to create a backend network configuration acting upon your YAML file. We will be using NetPlan Apply to change the network configuration of an Ubuntu 2204 server instance. So let's go see how this works. So here we are at the prompt on my test server and before we can do what we want to accomplish, we have a couple things we want to install. So the first thing is you want to install the bridge utils with the sudo apt install bridge dash utils. And this installs some software that we're going to need in order to do bridging. The next thing that we want to make sure that we have installed is network manager because we're going to use network manager as our renderer. And on a server, you might not have Network Manager. On a desktop, you're more than likely going to have Network Manager. So we install Network-Manager. So now that Bridge Utils and Network Manager are installed, the next step is we want to go and look at what network configuration we have right now. And we can do an if config, and we can see that this system has ETH0 with an address of 172.16.1.191. And that's because my network is 172.16.0.0 with a subnet mask of 16. And then the loopback adapter, of course, is 127.0.0.1. So probably the simplest network connection you would ever have. So in order to use NetPlan, we want to move over to the slash Etsy slash NetPlan directory. And if you do an LS over there, you may or may not have some configuration files currently configured for NetPlan. And if you do, you can feel free to delete those and then uh, create your new ones from scratch. So we're going to start by changing our network configuration. And to do so, we're going to edit a file called 01-netcfg.yaml. So the name is not really important, but the fact that it begins with a 01 tells me that it's going to execute before any other YAML called 05 or 10 or so on. So lower numbers execute first. 
For my purposes, I always find it simpler to create one YAML file to do my entire network configuration, but it is possible in certain use cases that you might want to have more than one YAML file and just know that they execute in order. So if your intent is to completely change your network configuration, you want to go into the NetPlan directory and delete any existing YAML files and replace it with one of your own. So in this first exercise, what we're doing is we're specifying a network. Um, the renderer is Network Manager, which is why we installed Network Manager earlier. We have uh, device ETH0 because that's our only physical Ethernet device on this computer. And we have DHCP4 equal to false and DHCP6 equal to false. So then I have a bridges section and I'm creating a network bridge. The name of the network bridge is bridge zero and the interfaces that it uses are the only available interface that I have, which is ETH zero. I'm statically addressing this interface at 172.16.25.1 with a subnet mask of 16. And that's because my main network where my cable is connected is 172.16.0.0 with a subnet mask of 16. So you have to pick a static address that's available. And it's best practice to statically address a bridge because bridges are referred to by other devices. In fact, what bridges do is they connect one network to another network. So in the use case that I've had on videos of my channel before was to show that you would have a LexD um, container instance and that you would bridge it through a, a bridge device on a parent network, a parent host, and this would be say example of the parent host. And when it bridges that network, then it connects down and gets a DHCP address on the main network. So you can't directly do that with ETH0. Instead, you have to have a bridge device, which is why we installed bridge utils and which is why we're going off and doing this. The next section is a section called routes. So this used to be called um, gateway four in previous versions, but I'm using Ubuntu 2204 and Ubuntu 2204 gateway four has been deprecated and replaced with the routes where you have a two directive to default, meaning the default route via 172.16.0.1, which is my default gateway on my router to get to the internet or get to other networks on my, uh, on my network. And then next I have name servers. I provided two addresses. 1.1.1.1 and 1.0.0.1, which of course are the addresses for Cloudflare's DNS service. And then um, STP is a, uh, is a, a routing connection type, and we're saying forward delay is four. That's about as simple as we can get, and we don't want to do any DHCP on this particular um, uh, gateway device or bridge device because it's going to be handled by the things that are passed through the bridge. And so the thing providing the DHCP would be on the network that the bridge is connected to. So that being done, all I have to do is a net plan apply and it simply configures it. Now, if I do an if config, you'll see that we have a device called bridge zero. And bridge zero has gotten our address 172.16.25.1. So I could connect to this server by SSHing to 172.16.25.1 from my network. But you notice that the physical device ETH0 no longer has an ethernet address because we are no longer has an IP address, I should say, because we did not tell it to grant one. And that's fine because we'll use bridge zero for that. But the added value of having bridge zero is that bridge zero can be used from things like LexD containers or Docker containers to connect to the main network and therefore um, get a DHCP address from the main network. So next, what if I wanna go back into the file again, and this time I have a different configuration 
And you notice this configuration does not have the bridge configuration. I'm simply saying ETH0, DHCP4 is true, DHCP6 is false. Um, set up my default route, same as it was before with the bridge, and my name servers are the same. So there's no mention of the bridge there. And if I do a, um, if I do a net plan apply, And then if I do an if config, you can see that the bridge is gone and we now are back to 172.16.1.192, which was the original DHCP address that I had on device ETH0. Physical machines can have more than one ethernet adapter, that is more than one adapter card, Virtual machines can be configured with more than one Ethernet adapter. And also, LexD containers can be configured with more than one Ethernet adapter, as I featured on the channel before. So what I did with this container is I went in and I added an ETH1 adapter. Now, if I go into my netconfig YAML file and look at the settings, you can see that I have a default route on ETH0, but I do not have a default route on ETH1. And other than that, they're really identical. So the only real difference here is that default route. And the reason for that is because you can only have one physical device in your machine that is the default route. So let's go ahead and save that and do a net plan apply. And then we will do a if config to see what we have. And the if config shows me that I have ETH0, which still has the address of 172.16.1.192. But now I have ETH1 that has another address of 172.16.1.119. So as before, we'll go back in and re-edit the netconfig.yaml file. And when we get in here, we'll go ahead and delete the section for ETH1. And we'll save the file with a control X and save and yes. And then I do a net plan apply. Now, if I do an if config, I'm still going to have ETH1. And the reason I still have ETH1 is because I haven't removed it from the LexD container. So next, I'm going to go ahead and remove it from my LexD container. So now that I've removed the ETH1 device from the LexD container, it's pretty much equivalent to getting a hardware machine, opening it up, and removing an Ethernet adapter. So I've done another net plan uh, apply, as you saw previously. And now if I do an if config, you'll see that ETH1 is gone. The next thing that we want to be able to do is to configure VLAN adapters in our Ubuntu server using net plan. So the first thing you have to do is you have to have VLAN support. Now I've installed this previously, but you want to do a sudo apt install VLAN to make sure that you have VLAN support installed on your server. So let's edit our YAML file once again. And now that we've gone in here, you can see that I still have the same definition for ETH0, and I still have the same uh, definition as far as the default route and the name servers. But at the end of the file, I've added two additional sections for VLANs. I've defined VLAN 100 and VLAN 200. Now you can arbitrarily name your VLAN adapters anything that you want, but the ID should match the ID of an existing, again, an existing VLAN on your network. So in order to use VLANs, you have to have a managed router and a managed switch. And in this particular case, this computer is connected to a port on a switch with the VLAN profile of all, which allows connection to any VLAN. So since that's the case, VLAN 100 and VLAN 200, which exist on my network, are two VLANs that I'm able to connect to. 
So the VLANs are going to use ETH0 as their parent device because that's the real physical device. And on VLAN 100, I'm setting the address to be 192.168.100.77. It was just an arbitrary static address that I came up with. And you also have to mention the subnet mask with a slash 24. Likewise, VLAN 200, I went ahead and set with 192.168.200.88 with a subnet mask of 24. So now that we have that file set, all we have to do is another net plan apply. And what results is if config, and we can see that at the very top, we have our ETH0 device that is still here at 172.16.1.192 because it gained a uh, dynamic DHCP address. And then we have the loopback adapter, which is the same as before. But now we have a VLAN 100 device, which is addressed at 192.168.100.77. And we have a VLAN 200 device, which is addressed at 192.168.200.88. So just as another interesting aside, here we are in LexD dashboard. And I've covered LexDWare, LexD dashboard on my channel before, and it's a great piece of software to provide you a GUI front end to manage LexD containers. But in this particular case, I thought it was interesting because if you look down at the overview for the test node that we've been using, the very last thing that we did was we created the two VLANs. And you can see here that it lists the IPv4 addresses. Um, and it's showing 172.16.1.192 with a subnet mask of 16 for my main network, that's ETH0. It shows 192.168.100.77 with a subnet mask of 24, and that is on my VLAN 100. And finally, it shows 192.168.200.88 with a subnet mask of 24, which is on my VLAN 200. In summary, we learned that NetPlan can direct the configuration of an Ubuntu server or desktop to communicate to an untagged network and also to a VLAN. We configured a server with both a DHCP address and a static address. We configured a server with multiple VLAN adapters. And NetPlan is useful for configuring the connectivity to your network easily. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel, and we'll see you next time.